We are on. Okay, Bob, come on. You can do this. You need this job. Just turn your brain off and keep going. Is my mic on? Tina, I don't know how to say this, but we're not going to be celebrating you on Secretary's Day. I Hey Carol, could you not sit on top of my desk? Because I end up just looking at your body. Well, that's what I wanted. Everybody, we're back from lunch at five. We're back from lunch at five. So please finish what you're eating. Hi, I'm Cookie, and if one more person adjusts the thermostat in here without my permission, I will destroy everything they have ever loved! Got that? Okay, nobody, you're somebody now. Yep. And our wrong answer of the game is brought to you by... Is it a dog? Just answer yes or no to the various photos based on whether or not you think it's a dog or not. Then you'll win the game. How fun is that? Very. Try to choose the wrong answer brought to you by our sponsor to get prizes and cash. Okay, let's begin. Get ready, time to crash in. Right off the bat, high fructose fun syrup. Which of these food products does not contain corn syrup? Kellogg's Corn Pop Cereal, Brock's Candy Corn, State Fair Classic Corn Dogs, or Cracker Jack Caramel Coated Popcorn and Peanuts? Sorry, but most frozen corn dogs have corn syrup in them too. Makes them more fattening, which is a huge selling point amongst frozen corn dog eaters. Here's what you meant to pick. The sweetness in Kellogg's Corn Pops comes merely from sugar and the love they put in. I like foods with as much corn as possible. That's why I'm pleased to announce my very own new product, Cookie Masterson's Genetically Modified Corn Covered Corn Nubbins. Oh, I'm eating one now. Mmm. Oh, the cream corn and corn nuts go so well together. Mmm. Get some today. This one's called Fly Me to the Cloon, and this dissertat is hurtling through the cosmos. I'm gonna read off seven titles, and for each one you tell me if it's a scientific publication by Galileo Galilei or a George Clooney movie. If it's Galileo, press the square button. If it's Clooney, press the circle button. Cool, let's do it. Solaris. Gravity. The Starry Messenger. The Assayer. From dusk till dawn. Discourse on floating bodies. Confessions of a dangerous mind. On the Clooney scale, this would have been a leatherhead. You know, sometimes when I look up in the night sky into the deep expanse of space, I can't help but wonder, why wasn't Monuments Men a better movie? Ah, uh, just one of the mysteries of the universe, I suppose. Dance with me, Disco 3! Let's try... You know what they say about the size of a man's fret? Considering the respective sizes of their instruments, which of these male musicians is the least likely to be accused of <clears throat> compensating for something? A clarinet player, a piccolo player, an oboe player, or a bassoon player? The piccolo is actually a half-sized flute and the smallest of these instruments. So the piccolo player seems the least likely to be compensating for the size of their, um, other instrument. And as long as I've already gone through the trouble of setting up this premise, I would just like you to know, I play a kazoo. Coming up, Alt-Shift Medicine. 
I've been getting into Eastern medicine lately because I hate taking lots of pills, but this is kind of weird. My specialist gave me a fortune cookie. Cookie, fortune cookie, fortune Not that I'm complaining. I love cookies. Let's see what my fortune says. Prescription. One cookie AC. Now weird. It's a prescription. I'm not great with medical abbreviations, though. Uh, when was I supposed to eat my cookie? First thing in the morning, before a meal, after a meal, or at bedtime? <laughs> Why didn't you pick this? AC is a common medical abbreviation used on prescriptions and means before meal. Uh-oh. I already ate dinner today. That means I took this fortune cookie at the wrong time. I just hope there's no side effect. True. I think it's a little fog. I think it's good for that at all. Do you smell burning plastic? Here we have, till the closing credits do us part. If it followed the processional order of a traditional Christian wedding, what movie would probably have come out immediately after Bridesmaids, assuming the maid of honor is a bridesmaid? A raunchy comedy called Groomsman? A gross-out comedy called Ring Bearer? A racy comedy called Father of the Bride? Or an R-rated comedy called The Bride? <laughs> Watch the clock! In a traditional Christian wedding, the bridesmaids come out, including the maid of honor, last. Then the ring bearer immediately follows, then the flower girl, then the bride. The best part of the ring bearer movie is when the ring bearer comes down the aisle and steps in a huge crap left by Melissa McCarthy. We've finished round one, and it looks like you might be getting the hang of this. Don't forget, all the questions in round two are worth double. And remember, big cash prizes can be yours if you find the wrong answer of the game. Okay, how about it? Open wide for Animation Domination. Which member of the Griffin family from Family Guy most likely got a recent Apgar score? Stewie, Peter, Brian, or Meg? <laughs> It's so obvious. The APGAR scale is a detailed test used to assess the overall health of newborn babies, something that Stewie Griffin, a baby, experienced the most recently. And based on the shape of his head, he should have gotten an F-. minus. No, APGAR scores are for humans, not dogs. But you know what is for humans? Is it a dog, the game! The newest, coolest party game from the people who brought you which one is the spoon and how many fingers am I holding up? Today's wrong answer of the game is worth a whopping $8,000. Enjoy! Question 7! Say hello to... Keep your hellos to yourself. Which one of these pop stars is giving a polite Tibetan greeting? Miley Cyrus sticking out her tongue, Justin Bieber flipping the bird, Britney Spears flashing her crotch, or Lady Gaga wearing meat? Get out of here! Seriously, get out of here. Where's that confounded right answer? In Tibet, some people stick out their tongue as a greeting to show you they don't have a black tongue. If they did, it would mean they are the reincarnation of a cruel 9th century king. Not that anyone would ever suspect Miley Cyrus of being the reincarnation of a cruel 9th century king. Everybody knows she's the reincarnation of Hannah Montana. Duh. Follow me down to the sea. Oh, Pucker up for... Trivia and stuff. Where might the CEO of Linens and Things go to shop for the materials needed to make all the stores linen and things? Flax plants and things, agave seeds and things, sheep wool and things, or silkworms and things? Silkworms. Hmm. Now, I think, and I, I would have to double check this, that they make silk. Ready for this? Linen is made from the fiber of the flax plant, and things are made from other things, presumably. So this might be where the CEO goes to shop. 
Although he would probably make somebody else do the shopping for him. I mean, this is a guy who is too lazy to finish spelling the word and. <laughs> Take a stab at low spirits. As some of you may know, our studio is haunted by a ghost named Dennis. Well, I'm proud to announce that today I've promoted Dennis to be a writer. Ooh, thank you, Mr. Masterson. It's great because not only is Dennis hilarious, I found out that I'm not legally required to pay a ghost. Which reminds me, Kyle, you're fired. Again? But you already fired and rehired me twice this week! Yeah, you're fired again. So Dennis, let's get you a desk and, uh, figure out how to get you in the credits at the end of the game. How should the end credits read if Dennis the Ghost ghost writes for our former writer, Kyle Mortensen? Written by Dennis the Ghost, written by Dennis the Ghost and Kyle Mortensen, written by Kyle Mortensen, or written by Anonymous? <laughs> A ghostwriter is employed to write for someone, but does it under their employer's name. So get ready for a lot more questions about rattling chains and moaning and unfinished business, trapping oneself in this mortal realm, blah blah blah. Ooh, I also have some ideas for questions about breaking bad. No good. Next, flash him if you got him. What would you expect to see in a spring break video called Girls Gone Call of the Wild? Girls exposing themselves as they harpoon a whale. Girls lifting their shirts as they fight in the Spanish Revolution. Girls flashing their breasts as they pan for Klondike gold. Or naked girls committing cannibalism in the Andes. Hello? Any last words? Not too late. Smart people choose this. The novel Call of the Wild follows a sled dog and his owners during the Klondike Gold Rush. But there is no nudity in the actual book Call of the Wild unless you count the doodles I made in the margins. Step right up to the jack attack. When you see two clues that match, press the X button. 2000 if you're right. 2,000 gone if you're wrong. And don't forget... Remember the clue! It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Don't forget my advice. When it comes to do's and don'ts, let's focus on the don'ts. That's the game! One piece of advice I never take is don't dip your pen in the company ink, if you know what I mean. And if you don't, the pen is your penis, and the company ink is this jar of company ink. Hey, look, it can write my name! 
of coffee. That's what we pour at High Horse Coffee House, but it's not for everyone. Frankly, your taste buds probably can't appreciate how complex and rich our coffee is, and you know what? It angers us to think of you drinking it. Okay, there it is, and hey, let's take it a step further. We despise you. Our coffee is f***ing amazing and complex, and it's like from another f***ing dimension, but it's wasted. It is wasted on you. I would rather pour our coffee on a pile of manure than let it touch your tongue. That's right, you rate lower than steaming manure piles, so stay away. You just stay away, or so help me, I won't be held responsible for my actions. So remember that's High Horse Coffee House on Historic Mansion. No, you know what? F you. Hi, I'm Tony Pancheesi, owner of DIY Spaghetti Emporium, where DIY stands for do it yourself. I mean it. I don't have any staff, so you're doing everything in this restaurant for yourself. And my name isn't Tony Pellucci. You're waiting your own table. You're cooking your own meal. And buddy, if you got time to lean, you got time to clean, capiche? So now you think your night's over because your family's done eating, huh? We close at 11.30. So get your ass back out there and wait on that two-top in section four. Nobody ducks out early on me, come on pedestro. And have you seen the state of those bathrooms? One of the women's toilets has a clog that could choke a horse. So if you're ready for a home-cooked Italian meal and earn half the minimum wage, come on down to DIY Spaghetti Emporium. As for me, Rachel Hanrahan. Uh, don't you hate going to the movies by yourself? I mean, I do. We have so much in common. I mean... Maybe you and I should sometime. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, whatever. I guess there aren't any good movies showing right now anyway, so never mind. Forget I said anything. That was stupid. <laughs> this message paid for by people who think you and Tina should go out on a date sometime just to see how it goes. That's so embarrassing. I did not put them up to that. Also paid for by Tina. <laughs>